Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a ranking video for foundations of all the foundations that I've recently reviewed on my channel. I thought it'd be a good idea to do a foundation battle, have a roundup of all these so you can see kind of what ranks at the top for me in terms of new releases. This was an idea brought on by one of you. So thank you to the subscriber who reached out and wanted to see specifically a foundation ranking. I love ranking videos myself and you guys know foundation is probably my favorite thing to test out and try. So I have seven foundations here that are recently new to me for review that I thought I would include in this roundup. All the really popular ones that you would expect to see in this video that I have personally tried and I cannot wait to share with you my ranking for these. So thank you so much for clicking on this video, for spending some time with me today. If you have not already, I would love for you to subscribe by hitting the red subscribe button, the bell if you wanna be notified of all my future videos, and let's go ahead and begin this foundation ranking. For my seventh place foundation, I have the Givenchy Prism Libre Skin Caring Matte Foundation. I have the shade 4N280, which is classified as a medium with a neutral undertone. That's typically what I gravitate towards. Sometimes I do light medium. I never really dip into tan. I usually stick to medium, but I will go lighter occasionally. I will have all videos that I've used these foundations linked below so you can see how they wear on my skin. This one ranked number seven for me because even though it says it's a skin caring matte, I did feel this to be a little bit dry on my skin. It says it's a medium coverage, but I did find this just to be too matte, too matte of a finish basically for this, which it's marketed as, so that's nothing against this. If you have oily skin, you might like this a little bit more, but I've personally used matte foundations that don't look this dry on my skin. I do have fairly normal skin right now, so I'm not sure why that I had that experience with this. It wasn't too bad, but definitely compared to my other foundations, it's not in my top. So not a terrible foundation. I haven't decluttered it yet because I didn't think it was that bad of a foundation, just not the best. It claims to be waterproof, long wearing and hydrating. I didn't experience to be hydrating. I haven't test the waterproof claim on this and it definitely wore a long time on my skin. So lives up to some of the claims, just didn't care for the finish and that is why it's in my seventh place spot. The next foundation might come as a surprise to some of you. It is the Charlotte's Beautiful Skin Foundation. I know so many people probably have this as their number one foundation, but this actually makes it into the sixth spot based on my ranking here. I initially picked this up in the shade seven, which looked a little orange on my skin. I do have six now, which matches me a lot better. It can be a little light, but I'd rather play with the undertone of this and deepen up my skin with bronzer or fix it with powder than use something with the wrong undertone. So sometimes I find Charlotte can go a little bit orange on me. Six is beautiful though, if you're looking for a true neutral foundation. So I thought the shade of this was really nice. Seven, not so much. I did use seven in a video for you guys. It is really pretty. I liked how this looked on my skin. I thought it wore really nicely, super hydrating. This definitely is hydrating, very skin-like. I like the consistency of this, the texture. The packaging isn't my favorite. I don't like air pump foundations because they can stop working after a while. Sometimes you have to massage the packaging just to get the product out. They're just annoying to me, so I would prefer it in something else, but this is strictly based on the formula and performance. I'm not knocking it for packaging. It's just how it looks like on my skin. Very beautiful, I did like this. It's just not my favorite. Again, there's others that I'm going to sing their praises. You're gonna hear why I love them. This just isn't as nice as the others. It might not wear as well, might not look as smooth. That's kind of how I feel for this one. I have other foundations that just sit a little bit nicer on my skin, make it look less textured. This one can kind of accentuate the texture on my skin and just doesn't have as thin of a formula as I personally would like. So that is why it is in the sixth place spot. In number five, we have the Dermablend Flawless Creator Liquid Foundation Drops. This foundation has recently got really popular on TikTok especially. I've also used this in a tutorial showing you how I mix this. So the beauty behind the Dermablend Flawless Creator Liquid Foundation Drops is that you can custom create your coverage and mix this in with other stuff. People are using this strictly 
as is on their skin and not mixing it with anything. So definitely you're gonna get that coverage there. It's super thin. So if you need a high, high coverage foundation, this looks skin-like and will give you that coverage. So I would recommend that if you want full on full coverage, I personally don't like a full on full coverage look. It looks very unnatural on my skin. I do like to have spots of my skin peeking through. So I much prefer something that's a buildable medium. That's my definition of a perfect foundation. That's why this doesn't make it into my top picks because I do have to play around with this. The shades I feel like are a little bit tricky. I have 37W. It looks way darker in the bottle than it shows up on the skin. It is lighter, so you have to take that into consideration. But I do like this for mixing, and I think a lot of people will enjoy this. I can see why so many people like it. And there's huge versatility behind it because you can mix it in with your moisturizer, with any sort of other foundation to bump up the coverage. What I like to do with this, mix it in with a glowy tinted product to mattify it slightly, but boost the coverage. It still maintains the glow of that, but just gives it a little bit more coverage. If that's something you're looking for, this is definitely one to check out. It's high up there on my list, not my number one, because we have some others that are just a little bit easier to work with. It is a dropper sort of packaging, which is perfect for this sort of thing, when you wanna just mix a couple drops in with something to boost the coverage. So the packaging makes sense on this. I have other droppers that I'm gonna talk about that I personally don't care for, but this dropper makes sense. Love how thin it is. It looks very skin-like and will give you that coverage. This is the fullest coverage of all the foundations that I'm gonna mention if you're looking for coverage. Another very, very skin-like foundation. It's even in its name. It's in my fourth place spot. It is the Makeup Forever HD Skin. And I like the original HD foundation. I thought it was beautiful. I used it for years. I actually used the original on my wedding day. That was my foundation of choice. This one has a little bit thinner of a consistency. It is definitely untraceable on the skin. This is super skin-like. It is a buildable medium, which is my preferred type of foundation. I just don't know why I don't reach for this as much as my others. It's in the middle of the pack. I honestly forget about it a lot of the time and that doesn't mean it's a bad foundation. It's just forgettable in my opinion because the other ones just have certain qualities about them that just make them stand out to me. This is a decent foundation. I know so many people, again, who like it. It's worth a try. It's been around for a long time for a reason, just recently repackaged and made better. I've trusted this enough on my wedding day. It is truly HD. It looks undetectable on the skin. It looks amazing in person, amazing in photography, really one of those ones that you would wanna wear <laughs> for your wedding day. It lasts a long time. So if you want something to truly blend in with your skin, they have an amazing shade range in Makeup Forever HD, they always have. Definitely one to check out. I love the packaging of this, how the caps match the foundation. Beautiful aesthetic if you're into that, it looks incredible. But a forgettable foundation for me, for whatever reason, these next three, I will probably always have these next three in my foundation drawer. So top three, here we go. The third place spot we have is the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. And this one was recently beat out by a very new foundation, which I will be talking about next. I have the shade 3.5 Vanuatu, which I typically use for NARS. The Vanuatu in the Light Reflecting is different than the previous foundations in case you're curious of matching that way. I wouldn't go off that. I still use this one, but I can get away with Valencia as well. I think it's a good match. I can't do Stromboli or Barcelona anymore because the undertones are a little bit off for me, especially Stromboli. I used to use that shade. I do feel like Vanuatu is more of my undertone, so I really like this one. Again, I do reach for Valencia as well, and I also have that one in this foundation. So this one, again, looks skin-like, wears well. How it beats out the Makeup Forever is probably just the coverage and how smooth it makes my skin. This does a beautiful job at smoothing my skin. This looks more natural. This one makes me look more perfected. So that is the only thing that I can detect between this one and the Makeup Forever HD, and that's why I reach for this one a little bit more. Here is the Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. And here is the light reflecting foundation from NARS, both in Vanuatu. You can see this one looks a little bit more neutral compared to the Vanuatu and the light reflecting one. And that's why I like the undertone of this one a little bit more. We're getting pretty low on this one. And if I had to 
decide between the two foundations, I think for me personally, I would still repurchase the Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. It just has a little bit more coverage for me. It has that long wear, which I look for. This one doesn't wear as long. It's still long wearing. It has that skincare kind of hybrid to it, which I know appeals to a lot of people. I like to leave them separate myself, but it doesn't make this one a bad one because I have used skincare infused foundations that I just do not care for at all. But this one seems to play nicely with a lot of my other makeup, which is a good thing because if it didn't, I would not like it. But I think if I had to pick, I would still go natural radiant longwear versus the light reflecting. NARS for me has always hit it out of the park for foundations. I've loved Sheer Glow. I used that for years, probably a solid two, three years. I used Sheer Glow consistently. Then I fell in love with this. And I also used the tinted moisturizer from NARS for an everyday, which I think is amazing. This is also a great addition to the NARS lineup. For whatever reason, I still reach for the Natural Radiant Longwear more. It could also be due to how perfect the color is because Vanuatu in that one is a dead on match for my skin. You can see the tonal difference there. This one just blends into my skin a lot better. This one is much more warm. Moving into my second place spot, we have the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. This could even be my number one, except the price point of this is so ridiculously high that that kind of steers me towards my number one, which I will talk about, which has beautiful claims to it. This one for me is perfect if you have aging skin. I don't think you need to invest in this. If you have perfect youthful skin, you don't really need to go here yet. I feel like this truly is beautiful because of how it lays on fine lines and texture. So if you have any of those issues, you really wanna check this one out. I know it's pricey, but for me, it makes a huge difference of how my skin looks. This wears incredibly beautifully throughout the day. There's almost no detectable change. It says it's transfer resistant, but I do find if I touch my skin with this, it can kind of move around on me and come off. I feel like that's more so because of my skincare disrupting this a little bit, especially my SPF, I feel like reacts with this. So it's a little bit finicky in that sense, but even with all those things considered, how this looks like on my skin is literally airbrushed skin. It looks so beautiful in person. It shows up nicely on camera, but truly in person. This foundation is face tune in a bottle. It will sit on my texture, my pores, my fine lines, and just really take years off my skin. So that is why I really love this. It definitely has that soft focus effect that it claims, soft glow foundation. Truly what it does to the skin is that ambient lighting sort of beautiful glow to the skin. It looks naturally flawless, just, my skin but better like way better <laughs> is in this bottle i do struggle with the swatches of this though they have recently put up some new swatches on the hourglass website which i found to be more helpful initially i got eight when i purchase this again i will be getting number 10 i feel like that will be a better match for me i do have eight right now it works it's going to be perfect going into the cooler months for me but come summer when i want to purchase this again i'll be getting shade 10 Number two foundation could definitely be number one, but the price sets me off. The subscriber wanted to know where this placed in my foundation ranking. I think I discovered this fairly recently still and wanted to include it in because this is my number one foundation right now and it's the Beauty Blender Bounce Skin Tint. This is a medium buildable coverage. It has a dropper, which I don't care for. However, the formulation of this is so good. The price point is even good at Sephora. This is a skin tint, so it looks super natural skin-like on your skin, but it has the long wear to it, which for skin tints for me, that's one of the things that I struggle with is that they don't last. This one lasts so incredibly well on the skin. You don't need any sort of primer, setting spray, nothing to prolong this because this will do the job on its own. The formula of this is perfection. I wish it was in a different sort of dispenser. Just a pump for me would be perfect as the dropper. I'm not really a fan of. It does work for the Derma Blend, but for this, since I am using it all over my face, I would just much prefer to pump it on the back of my hand and apply it with a brush that way. All things considered, price, quality, wear, how skin-like it looks, how flawless, how smooth. You can wear it sheer, you can build it up. 
everything about this makes this my number one foundation. It truly is the best to me. I always recommend you guys check it out. I know so many people are onto this because of me. I'm wearing it today, I do have the Milk Hydro Grip on to give it more of a glow. When it doesn't have that, it's a little bit more perfecting, but I just wanted more glowy skin today. So that's kind of what I did, but I can wear this for every day, full glam. It's just one of those foundations that work and I highly, highly recommend if you have not checked out already. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed my ranking. Let me know where you put these foundations if you tried them. I'm still looking to get the new Lancome. Kosas hasn't launched in Canada. So there's some foundations that I do wanna test out that I just haven't got my hands on, but if there's any that you know of that you'd like me to try out next, leave them in the comment section below and I'll try and get to a dedicated video for you guys. But there are some on my list that I personally want that I would have put in this review, I just don't have right now. So thank you again for spending some time with me today. If you have not already, I would love for you to join the family here by hitting the red subscribe button, the bell if you wanna be notified of all my future videos, and I will see you guys in my next video.